Ask a question, get an answer. That's the Everyday Vopreneur podcast summer series in a nutshell. For June, July, and August, I'm inviting Vopreneurs onto the show to ask me their most pressing business and marketing related question, and I'll do my best to provide a brilliant and helpful, I hope, answer. Uh, this week, I'm welcoming onto the show James Brown. James, good to have you here. Very good to be here, Mark. Thanks for having me. So what is your most pressing business and marketing related question? I think it's one that's been creeping up uh, in, in a lot of conversations, of course, recently, and it's about AI. So AI is here. Uh, it's getting more uh, and more intelligent, uh, artificial or not. And as VOs at the start of our careers, within the first couple of years, perhaps some of us are not firmly established in the business. How do you think that we can compete and succeed uh, with AI and make sure that we still have a business in five years' time? This is a uh, – man, I'll tell you, if I had a nickel for every time that I got asked this question in the last month or two, I, I could probably actually retire and not have to worry about AI. But it, it's, it's a very real thing, right? And honestly, I think we're all trying to figure out exactly what you're talking about, even for me. I mean – I sat down last year and, and had a conversation with my banker and was like, okay, so let's just say that 10 years from now, the robots have taken over. You know, how much money do I got to have in the bank in, in order to be okay and, you know, potentially be able to retire or whatever? So, I mean, it's, it's a question that we're all thinking about. It's a question that I have definitely been digging into trying to come up with brilliant answers for. Um, the one thing I will say as we get into this AI has been around a lot longer than I think most of us realize. And, and most of us have been interacting with AI a lot longer than most of us realize. If you've ever used Siri or Alexa or, you know, OK Google or, or any of those things, right? We've all been interacting with AI. It's, you know, when you, when you autocorrect on your phone is AI. Uh, if you're a Gmail user and it, you know, does the predictive text thing where it, you know, tries to complete your sentences for you and all that sort of stuff. So, I mean, the technology has been around a lot for a while. I think with the onset of chat GPT coming out, you know, late last year, that's the thing that's really got us like, wow, because now everybody's talking about it. Or it's a, it's a, it's like an ongoing, it's almost like a drinking game now with quarterly earnings reports for major companies. How many times, you know, take a shot every time they, they mention AI in their quarterly earnings report and how drunk will you be by the time we're done or whatever. And so it's definitely something we're thinking a lot more about. Now, I know, and, and this is probably, I, I don't want to say it's naive, but I have heard different AI models being used in voiceover. And I think... There are some things that we need to understand before we start to get too panicked about it. And one of them is it's not strictly a matter of taking a script, dumping it into a program, pushing a button, and it spits out a perfectly engineered recording. There's actually a lot of work that has to happen behind the scenes in order to make some of those recordings sound better. Now, on TikTok or whatever, you know, you use the AI voice and yeah, it's there. It's not great. Nobody wants to listen to that for a two hour training course, I don't think. Uh, but if you want to do more advanced stuff, there's actually engineering that's involved behind the scenes. And so I think as long as that's going on, I think that gives us a little bit of security that we're not fully replaceable. But the question then becomes as a voice actor, how do we protect ourselves? And I think there's a couple of things that I keep looking at. First and foremost, I think that it is going to come for the low end of the spectrum first. So if you are a voice actor who has built your business on Fiverr, for example, I think that is an area, a platform that I think is potentially going to get hit first because if it's already low budget, then it's not a big leap to go to no budget. Uh, and, and, you know, if it's, good enough is what people are looking for, then, you know, for some AI is, is going to do it. And I've actually had some conversations with some voice actors who are Fiverr talent, who are successful Fiverr talent, who have said themselves that they've already started to see a little bit of a shift in the number of opportunities. And, and some of them who are working with, I can't remember what the specific title is, but you know, they're, they're account specialist or whatever at Fiverr. Even Fiverr themselves has acknowledged, yeah, this is, you know, this is starting to become a thing and not just in voiceover across the board, right? People who were previously outsourcing graphic design jobs on the platform are now getting 
AI to do graphic design and, and things of that nature. So I definitely think if you're on the low end, you know, you're working for lower budget clients that are paying lower budget rates for e-learning or for explainers or for audiobooks or things of that nature, I have a feeling like that's what's going to go first. Uh, and so I would certainly be looking at if that's where my business was focused, how do I get to the next level, which could be improving your website. It could be working with a great coach. It could be improving your, your demos. It could just be having the confidence to go to that higher level and compete at, at that higher level. I think that's certainly one thing. So I would be cautious of being on the low end because I think that's what goes first. I would say the other thing is focus on your acting because as much as AI can talk at this point, it cannot act right? AI cannot emote. AI cannot relay feelings the way that a, that a human can relay feelings. It can't interpret a script the way that a, uh, a human can interpret a script. Anybody who's ever used, uh, you know, Siri to dictate a text message or whatever, and, you know, she doesn't know whether you're making a statement or asking a question and which punctuation to use because they don't, it's not built in yet. Is it coming? Probably. But it's not there yet. And so what does that mean? It means for anything that requires any level of acting or performance, I think that that's ultimately going to be the last thing to go. Does it replace every aspect of voiceover in 15 years, 20 years, whatever? I have no idea. By then, we could be living the Jetsons life. I, I <laughs> Right? I, I don't know about that. But... Uh, I think that those are a couple of things that you can definitely be doing to protect yourself in the meantime. Another interesting dynamic of this, and, I, and I've started to see this in my own business, and I've started to play into it in my marketing. Voice actors aren't the only people that are worried about being replaced by AI. Every job, every genre, every skill, every service, right? AI can do text editing. AI can do coding. AI can do video editing, it can do image editing, it can do all of these sorts of things. And so a lot of the people that we're working with, video producers and advertising agencies and things of that nature, they're all trying to figure out how to save their jobs too. And so I think if we can come together to offer a better, more valuable service as a whole, I think that that comes into play. And a really great example of this is I have one client now who has had one of their clients say, we're going to, we're going to try AI, right? It's a, it's a budget saver. We're going to try it. And so, you know, that, that means money out of my pocket. That means money out of his pocket. So my question to him was, how do we collectively put our intelligence resources and skill set together to go out and find five more of that particular client, but who still wants to work with a human? And so let's work together on our marketing efforts as opposed to working independently, right? So now, uh, instead of me just marketing myself to instructional designers, I'm teaming up with an instructional designer and we're gonna put together our resources and try to figure out how do we find some companies that are still interested in using humans across the board to, to do all of this sort of stuff. And so, you know, two minds come together into one towards a, a common good. And so I think that that's another area where there may be opportunities because the people that we work with are trying to figure out how to save their jobs too. So how do we all come together to try to figure out how to benefit each other in the midst of all of this? So what do you think about that? So humans must come together to battle the machines, you're saying? Yes, exactly. I it sounds like there something... might be a film script there. Somewhere. Yeah, it sounds like something straight out of sci-fi. I'm sure somebody's written a book about it at some point in time. But, you know, I, I shared a post on LinkedIn uh, recently, and, and I, it was a, you know, just a goofy picture of me holding a, a plug that I had unplugged from the wall, right? Just holding the, the unplugged cord. And uh, I shared about a recent customer service experience that I had with a chatbot. And anybody that's ever had a customer experience service with a chatbot, like you understand. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> human. Human now. Please human give me quickly. a human. Right? Because it asks you a question, which is yeah. inevitably the wrong question. And then you're trying to, like, you spend 15 minutes that. just yeah. trying to get it to give you the right information. And all the while you're thinking, for the love of God, just give me a human on the line, right? Yeah, absolutely. And, and so, you know, it, it, that 
that is part of what is inherently wrong with AI. Now, is that a technology that is going to improve over time? Yeah, it is. But for now, it's still a pain point. And so the point that I was making was, look, work with the human then, right? I'm not going to, I'm not going to push you off on a chat bot. You got a problem with your voiceover. You got a problem with your script. You need to work through something. You call me, we talk face to face, whatever we, we solve it. Right. And so that's still a pain point because everybody's experiencing the transition, the frustration, the growing pains. And so I think there is something to be said about every once in a while, reminding people that you bring a human to the experience, right? You bring that, that side of things. And so that's something else I would be looking at is, so we're, we're trying to get ourselves out of the low end of the spectrum for voiceover. Cause I think that's what goes first. We are focusing on our acting and, and really just being able to deliver great performances across the board because AI can't do that yet. I mean, You've, you've read directions from auditions from agents, right? You've sat there and you've read the three paragraph instructions and you're like, I don't even sure. understand what this person is saying, right? We can't understand. We're trying to figure out how in the world do you turn all of that 17 conflicting pieces of direction into the character that I need to deliver for this, this audition read or whatever. But AI can't. It can just straight read what it's been told to read. So that's where we still have an advantage over the robots, I think, for now. I think if you're still in the business of connecting, then I think that that's only really something that a human can do. Yep. Uh, and I think that is what, for at least for now, separates separates us from a very intelligent machine. Yep. Um, and in terms of, yeah, you're right with the acting, that's, yeah, that's a different level. And of course, if you, you mention auditions, and often they want you to go in and go as big as possible, and then you can dial it back. Yep. And a computer will never be able to do that because it can't, uh, it won't be able to adapt like that. So, um, yeah. I think what it comes down to is there's going to be two different types of voice actors. I think there's going to be one that's going to just be scared by all of this. And, and ultimately they're, they're just going to feel like it's not even worth it. And I think I've already seen a little bit of that to a degree, like voice actors who are questioning, is this the right move or should I already be looking for a different career or, or whatever? Uh, so I think there's going to be that group of people. I think on the flip side, you're going to have voice actors who are going to say, all right, then if, if acting is what it's going to take, then I'm going to start investing a little bit more time and a little bit more effort and a little bit more money into working with some great coaches, top quality coaches that can help me to become a better actor, that can teach me how to better interpret a script, that can teach me how to uh, better deliver on the, the specs that, that agents are asking for. And I'm going to make myself as invaluable as possible for as long as possible. You know, one of the things that I said, I, I recently did an, an interview on the podcast uh, where we were talking about chat GPT and we were talking about AI and, and how this is going to impact business. And I said, at the end of the day, my objective is this. I'm going to make as much money as humanly possible for as long as I can make as much money as humanly possible until there comes a point where, you know what, there's no more opportunity out there for me, whether that's five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. I don't know. Sure. But, but sitting around and sweating it and sitting around and stressing over it, sitting around being afraid of it. Is, is not, I don't think, the solution that's going to work. And so, you know, I just, I just have to figure out how do I deliver a better service ultimately than what, what AI can do? Because for a certain segment, it is going to be all about finances and AI is going to be cheaper and that's going to be the bottom line. But there's a segment of buyer that is out there who still wants good quality, top quality, human quality that AI can't deliver. I got to go find those people. That's my plan. So we're aiming high, right? We are. <laughs> All right, man. I hope that helps. That's great. Thank you very much, Mark. It's, I hope uh, you still feel like you're going to have a career in five years. <laughs> I hope so. I've only been doing this now like full time for a year and a half. So I should be very disappointed if I have to stop it. Uh, I have no plan to do anything else. So, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm all in. That's, I've had that conversation with my wife. I'm like, I don't have a backup plan at this point. So double down and make it work for as long as possible. That is, that is the plan. Absolutely. All right, James. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show and thank you for your question. Thank you very much for having me, Mark.